Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin. Ve sallallahu, ve sallallahu ve sallallahu ala Seyyidina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve ashabihi ecma'in. Okay, so we're continuing in our reading of the work by Muhammed al-Tayyib al-Ansari. And it's an explanation on the work by Muhammed ibn Abdul Wahab, one of the classic works in Aqidah, theology, creed, right? Athrath uh, al-Usul, uh, right? Those uh, uh, looking at the looking at Tawheed and those things that we are obliged to believe about Allah. Uh, Commonly understood as what Tawheed al Asma'i wa Sifati wa Ruhiya wa Rububiya, right? The oneness of Allah's uh, beloved and beautiful names and descriptions, as well as the oneness of Allah's uh, uh, Godship or divinity, and of course, in His Lordship. And so, continuing with that, I wanted us to go back briefly and look at these four opening contentions that the Imam wants us to examine, what he calls al masail al arba And this is all going to be underneath the rubric of ilm or knowledge, in which he says what there are three things that every human being must know about, and he must know them as I've highlighted for those who can see online, right? Bil adilla. He must know them with proofs, meaning that it's something that can be substantiated by the Book of Allah or by the statements of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's the main uh, source of our dalil, of our proof or substantiating that. And so he says of those three, he says, what ma'arifat Allah, ma'arifat nabiyyihi, Every person must come to know and have intimate knowledge of who is Allah, knowledge about Him, knowledge about His Prophet, and knowledge about His Deen. Uh, and again, what with with uh, um, with proofs, with what bil adilla. And so he begins and he opens up here. Let me pull up my copy that I have here for myself so I can kind of read along uh, a little bit with you. And so he opens up and he says, what will help us understand these is going to be, um, he's going to give us an example here from Surah Al-Asr. So he says what, that, so that's the first part, right? That we have to understand who is Allah, his prophet, and his deen. And then the second part, Athani, uh, right? Athania, the, the, the second part of that contention is going to be what? Al-amal. So the first part he talks about knowledge. Then the second part he talks about is then we have to understand actions, deeds, uh, righteous works. We have to understand them. He says, "What amru bi had al ilm?" And of course, action has to be accordance to knowledge, and knowledge being defined by what? Knowledge of who who is Allah, who is His Prophet, and who is Islam, and then acting upon knowledge in Allah, His Prophet, and Islam. And so, in his note, he says, "What had the man yadulu alayhi qawluhu taala fi surat al asr?" He said, "And this is alluded to or pointed to." Right, um, in terms of the need to act by knowledge, he said this is pointed to for us in the statement of Allah in the Quran in Surah Al Asr, in which he says, Ta'ala Bismillahir Rahman Rahim, Wal Asri in Al Insan Lafi Khusr. Allah makes a uh, he swears an oath and he says, What by the passage of time, mankind, all of us are lost. Uh, the exception to that is one, those who believe. And of course, believe here what? The ma'rifat Allah. Those that believe in Allah according to how He has described, He wishes to be believed in. 
They believe in Allah according to how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has described him and worshipped him. And they believe in Allah right according to the general understanding of the religion. And he goes on by saying, وَلَا بُدَّ مَعَ تَصْدِيقِ وَمَعْرِفَةِ مِنَ الْأَذْعَانِ وَالْإِنْقِيَادِ وَالطَّاعَةِ And he said that certainly, right, that when it comes to a tasdiq we had mentioned before, right, tasdiq is what to outwardly and openly proclaim the truths of Islam. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Al-Quran, Kitab Allah, and so on, right? That there is none to worship but Allah, that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, the Quran is the book of Allah, and so on and so forth, right? So, you know, without a doubt, that that, that and also ma'rifa, right? Having that knowledge, he said, min al, uh, min al How is that going to come up? Well, what is it going to produce, right? What is outward proclamation of faith, and knowledge it's going to produce the first thing he says is al uh the first thing that is going to produce is going to be uh, uh, a kind of obeisance right the first thing that it's going to do is it's going to um sorry I skipped ahead of my page here right is that it is going to be something that's caused us to um, obey and surrender. So what it calls an will in the which is also to comply, right? To comply with the authority of Islam, comply with the authority of Allah, the authority of His Prophet, and the authority of the various ahkam or the various commandments that Allah has given us, and also what ta'a. Right, and following right when Allah being obedient to Allah, and this includes being proactive. Uh, that obedience to Allah is not something that is limited to Allah gives a command and then you go do the command. Obviously, it includes that, but it also includes uh, both the, of not getting into things. So, for instance, and we studied this in Usul, and we went over this. Uh, this past weekend in the tafsir class, that we have uh, two types of, of command, two types of hukum. One where Allah says, for instance, وَعَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ Do the prayer, establish prayer. And so you have to make the prayer come into existence. The second is what we call al-adam, right? The absence of a thing. You have to create the absence of a thing. Right. That's a little bit more tricky, but for instance, Allah says, وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا zina." Right? Do not even approach zina. So zina has to never come into existence. And so this is something also encompassed in the idea of ta'a, in obedience that we do, that we have been commanded to produce, and we also work at not producing that we have been commanded to not produce. وَلِذَلِكَ نَجِلُ مِنْ أُسْلُوبِ الْقُرْآنِ أَنَّهُ يَذْكُرُ الْإِيمَانِ لَا يَذْكُرُ الْإِيمَانَ إِلَّا وَلَا يَقْرُنُهُ بِالْعَمْلِ الصَّالِحِ So he says that for instance, that you will find in the, in the style of the Qur'an, in the style in which Allah speaks in the Qur'an, you will not find him making mention of faith, of iman, but illa wa yaqrunuhu bil amal salih right? Except that he will also then mention with it some type of righteous deed. And of course, here he says, what illa ladina amnu wa amilu salihati, right? Except for those, the only people who do be saved from being lost are those who what? Those who believe in Allah and they do righteous deeds. Um, and so we'll get now to the third contention, right? We said there were four major contentions. Now the, the four, the first is what knowledge, the second 
is doing good works, al amal. The third will be kind of another deed or another kind of work, where he says, الثالثة أدعو والرابعة أصبر على الأذافه. So the third contention is that we are required to call others to Islam. And this is what he says, وَهَذَا مَا يُلُونُ عَلَيْهِ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالْحَقِّ So also in Surah Al-Asr, right? He said, this is also what Allah, uh, uh, or it's proven by Allah's statement and the meaning in which Allah says, وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالْحَقِّ Right? And to, in, to enjoin with others in truth. This is, he calls, what? الدَّعَوَةُ إِلَى Allah. This is to call others to Islam, what we often just think of as da'wah, right? To call people to Islam, right? So when Allah Ta'ala says, وَتَوَاثَوْ بِالْحَقِّ Right? What are we going to get together with other people for? It, except other than to goodness, the very definition of goodness is what? عِبَادَةَ Allah, right? To worship Allah. And so this is similar to the uh, to the verse in the third chapter of the Quran in Surah Ali Imran, where Allah Taala commands the Prophet Sallallahu to say to the people of the book, "Taala ila kalimatin sawa wa bainana wa bainakum, alla nu'mila illa Allah wa la lu shirku bihi shay'an." Say to them, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Say to the people of the book, "Let us come to a common word between the two of us." And this might sound like what we think of today as interfaith. And yet actually what Allah is saying, first say to them, let us come to a common word between us. What is this common word? What? La na'buda illallah. We are not going to worship anything other than Allah, which means me the Muslim and you the Christian. We are not going to worship anything but Allah. We are not going to, wor- I am not going to worship Allah and you worship Christ. And yet somehow we still come together. No. The common thing between the two of us, I cannot move from Tawheed. I can neither move from Tawheed Uluhiya, right? From Allah's oneness in His in His d- divinity, in His in His to be worshipedness. I can neither move from Him as a Rabb, right? Of which, if you think of Allah now as either having children or being a child of somebody Himself, when I would be that He is. Al-Masih, Isa ibn Maryam, that Allah is what? Jesus, the son of Mary. Now you have also left from the maqam of Rububiyyah. You have now left from the station of Allah's lordship. And most certainly you have left from the station of Al-Asma, Al-Husna, Wa-Sifatihi. You have left also from, from the station of his beautiful names. And you have left from the station of that which he describes himself with. Uh, Allah Ta'ala, uh, one of his names is not Isa ibn Maryam. One of, one of God's names, one of Allah's names is not Jesus, the son of Mary, nor is his description being a son. And so Allah commands the Prophet Sallallahu call the Christians to a middle way, but the middle way has to be upon Tawheed. And so... The third contention that the Imam Rahimahullah here who is mentioning is what Adawatu Ilayhi Subhanahu wa Ta'ala to call people to the way of Allah, to call them to the religion of Allah, who adawa ila din al haq. Right? It is to call people to the religion of truth. Right? He says, Fa ahl najati wal fawzi min al khusrani. بَادَ عَنَّا عَرِفُوا الْحَقِّ وَعَمِرُوا بِهِ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنْ يُبَلِّغُوهُ غَيْرَهُمْ دَعْوَةً وَتَعْلِيمًا وَإِرْشَادًا And so he says that after, right, that it is to call people to the religion of Allah, to the religion of truth. He said, so the, 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 the people of salvation in the hereafter and the felicity, what he calls أَهْلُ النَّجَاتِ وَالْفَوْزِ Min al Khusran, who are what? They are saved from loss and they are happy from not having had it because Allah says, What? Wal asri inna Allah swears an oath, all of mankind will 
be lost in this life and in the next, and they will experience uh, a lack of felicity and happiness in this life and in the next. Illa. Right? So, Illa al-ladina amanu, he says, this is Ahl al-Najati wal-Fawth min al-Khusra. He said that what, after they come to recognize the, the truth, ba'da an arifu al after they recognize the truth, وَعَمِلُ بِهِ And then act upon it. عَلَيْهِمْ أَنْ يُبَلِّغُوهُ غَيْرَهُمْ Then it becomes incumbent upon them. Then a responsibility is put upon them. So tabliq, right? Like when we talk in fiqh. But a person, like if a girl has her mens, if a boy has a wet dream or something, right? Once they reach the age of taklif or tabliq, then responsibilities are put upon their shoulders. They have to pray, they have to fast, so on and so on, right? Likewise, once you know the truth, right? Right? After you know that, عَلَيْهِمْ أَنْ يُبَلِّغُوهُ غَيْرَهُمْ then the responsibility upon us as believers, insha'Allah, is what? Da'awatan, call the people to truth. Wa ta'liman, and teach. Literally, teach. Because this is also the minhaj of the Rusul and Ashraf Anbiya. What this is the, the 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 this is the methodology of all of the messengers and prophets, and of course, as described, the most noble of them, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, somebody says, "Akhi, can you please join? I, I, how can I possibly join you? I'm uh, teaching a lesson." Um, and so. There is also, we cannot call people if we're also not going to provide some type of apparatus or institution or something that will also teach the people about it. Wa irshadin. And I'm going to take a little time to go into this last point where he talks about irshad, right? Or what sometimes we hear what rushd, right? And this is important for us to, to, to know the difference between some of these words. So for instance, many of us have heard the word huda and rushd, right? Many of us have heard the term huda and rushd, and they get translated into English, both of them, as guidance, right? Because as we just said here, right, the, the, the third contention is that we have to call people to Islam, provides a means of educating them about it so that they can be called and so that when they become Muslim, they know what to do. And also this thing he calls irshad, right? A kind of guidance. Well, what does this mean? So for instance, one of the ulama defined as rushd, he said, what yuqabiru bil ghayb. Right? That a rushd, and let's, let's stick with the word now in Arabic and we'll get to a translation in a second. He said, Ar-Rushd is the opposite of Al-Ghay. Al-Ghay can mean sinful behavior. Sinful, blameworthy behavior. Wal-Huda yuqabiru bid-dalala. Right? And so likewise, Huda, this type of guidance, it is what the very opposite of, dal- of, of Dalala. Right? Of, of misguidance in terms of Misguided information, right? فالغي ضد الرشد والرشد هو استقامة في العمل. And so he says that that sinful behavior, right, is the very opposite of a rushd, which means that rushd is rooted in action. Rushd is rooted in deeds and in action, and so it is the very opposite of sinful behavior and action. He says, الرشد هو الاستقامة في العمل. Rushd is to be upright in deeds. It is to be upright in deeds. والهدى هو الاستقامة في العلم. And therefore what هدى, right, that type of guidance, it is to be upright in one's knowledge. Right? 
We may not think of it that way today, right? But to think that Allah has a son, it is, it is, well, it is a type of dalala. It is misguidance because it's misguided in the knowledge of who Allah is, and it is not upright in an understanding of who God is, of who Allah is. And he says, وَإِذَا اجْتَمَعَا فُرِّقَا بَيْنَهُمَا وَإِذَا ذُكِّرَا الْخُدَا فَإِنَّهُ يَشْمِلُ الرُّشْتِ So that when these two are combined, right, we do separate them for understanding purposes. When Huda is made mention of, understand that it what? That it يَشْمِلُ الرُّشْتِ That it encompasses and it, it includes, right, I mean, correct knowledge about Allah and correct thinking about Allah. Huda, it includes correctly acting then upon that, right? To pray and fast and not to drink and not to fornicate. وَإِذَا ذُكِرَ الرُّشْدُ وَحْدَهُ دَخْلَ فِيهِ مَعَ مَفْهُومِ الْهُدَى And he says, likewise, when a rushd is made mention of, especially by itself, and I'll talk about that in a second, right? دَخَلَ فِيهِ مَعَ مَفْهُومِ الْهُدَى then it is included in the understanding of what is correctly uh, guided understanding of who Allah is. Now the reason why he says, uh, right? the re- you know, when rushd is mentioned by itself, for instance, the verse right after, ayatul uh, kursi, right, uh, where Allah talks about, la ikraha fiddin, there is no compulsion in religion. Right? There is no need for compulsion because it has been made clear what correct actions are in contrast to sinful ones. Right? So, meaning what? In that ayah, Allah talks about a rushd by itself. So he mentions, right? And so he says... Uh, الرشد, and so that they are related that for instance that rushd or what we can think of as rightly guided actions based upon faith right rightly guided actions based upon faith this would be a good translation for rushd because it's very hard to translate into one word right that it is is included in rightfully guided understanding of who Allah is, and rightful understanding of who Allah is is included in rightful actions based upon. Right? It's a little bit just to say, right, that there they are there is some interrelatedness between the two of them, but sometimes they are talked about in one way and sometimes they are talked about in another. However, if they are uh, if they are talked about together at the same time. We split them aside for understanding purposes so that we understand that what? Hidayah or Huda, right? It is related to understanding who Allah is. It is related to knowledge, right? And it is related to being upright in that. Right? Again, having the correct knowledge about who is Allah in his in his divinity, in his lordship, in his names and attributes. What and also in the it is it is the very object or rather the very goal, right? The very goal of knowledge is that we will obtain the truth about Allah fil ilm. Right? So it's what uh, uh, it is being upright in getting the right understanding of Allah, right, in knowledge, and to understand that rushd applies to actions. Right? That is, uh, you know, that is, uh, that is what it is, it is, it is pertaining to. And so he gives, for instance, or he, he gives us an example where this is used in the Quran, and this is a, a verse from 
uh, the seventh chapter, Surah Al-A'raf, in the 146th verse, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Sa usrifu an ayati al-ladina yatakabbarun fi al-ard bi ghayri al-haq. Right, and that what I will divert away from those my signs for those who what yatakabbarun fi al-ard bi ghayri al-haq. Those who are arrogant without any right to do so. Wa in yarau kull ayatin la yuminu biha. For if they see every kind of sign of which we have made in the heavens and the earth, right? They will not believe in it. وَإِنْ يَرَوْ سَبِيلَ الْرُشْدِ لَا يَتَّخِذُوهُ سَبِيلًا And when, it, when, when they see the right path to pious behavior, actions and nature, right? A rushd they will not take it as a sabil. They will not take it as a way of, of being. وَإِنْ يَرَوْ سَبِيلَ الْغَيْرِ However, if they see a path that leads to immoral behavior, يَتَّخِذُوهُ سَبِيلًا They will take it. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا That is because they have slandered and have called our verses untrue. Right? وَكَانُوا عَنْهَا غَافِلِينَ And so they have become heedless to them. So that's one example uh, that one of the ulama gave about helping us to understand a rushd Right, and then of course its counterpart uh, that. Uh, I've given you a translation here uh, that you can when you revisit inshallah the, uh, the, the PDF I'll make available you can read it over in some further detail right so athalathatu Right, we talked about what the third contention, what calling to Allah, based upon the last, uh, uh, or the, the, the third quarter of Surah Al Asr, what Watawasal Bil Haq. That was the third contention, what calling to Allah. And that is what we have to do it with, with, not, with knowledge and so on. They said, what Bil Irshad. We cannot call people to the religion of Islam if our behavior is not going to be. Morally rectified. We cannot call people to Islam if our if our behavior is morally rectified. No, not not morally rectified. And then the last part, watawasul bi sabr, and to mutually strive together to be perseverant as sabr. You know, many times sabr is translated as patience, but this is really a kind of incomplete or uh, uh, not inaccurate, but just incomplete description because sabr also means that you have to strive against something that will be somewhat difficult, somewhat arduous. And so a rabia, right? The fourth contention, he says, what? A sabr al adafihi, meaning that we have to be persevered in calling people to the religion of Islam because there will be difficulties in doing so. People will resist us. We just got through reading the verse when they are shown Allah's signs by Allah Himself. They reject it, so let alone what you and I do. And yet we have to be perseverant and not give up, keep making the call to people, right? And so we do so despite those hardships. As-sabr ala al-adafihi, right? And so to help us again understand, I, there was another definition, uh, one of the ulama had said, it said, ar-rushd ta'abirun wasi'un wa jami' That ar-rushd, right, action, that is based upon correct, faithful understanding. It is general, wide, and comprehensive. يمكن أن يستوعب كل امتياز. Right, and that what that rushed it is. It contains every upright virtue. Right, and again, virtue being what action. Every upright virtue that we can think of, it is contained in a rushd, right? Right? It is the path of up, uh, uh, It is literally the path of being righteous. المستقيم, what min dun uh, Right? From any kind of crookedness or deviation or any uh, mistakes, right? Min duni it is light 
and it is clarity, meaning that it illuminates, right? It sheds light upon what a person is doing, and it is clear. So that what right? Righteous action. When a person is doing something that is virtuous, that is amal salih, it is clear and it is distinct from that which is not. Right, and so when we get into what when, where the Prophet sallallahu talks about, in the halal bayinun wal haram bayinun baynahum mutashabihat, right, that permissible meaning good actions or things that are good, right, they are clear, and that which are the opposite of that that are haram or detestable are clear. However, there is a gray area that only a few will know. But when it comes to a rushd, or the, the person who is Rashid or Rashid, then that is the person when he does something, or even for ourselves, it will be the ya'u wal wuduhu. It will be clear and it will be distinct from anything that is wrong. And so when we're getting into something that starts to feel great, that's when we should pull back before do it, and then study or consult somebody to obtain, to ascertain, is this what? Is this is this right? Right? In which he considers right? And so when you're doing things that are right, that are rushed, when you're doing things that are based, that are actions based upon correct faithful understanding of the Quran, of the Prophet, وسلم, of the deen of Islam, Bil Adilla with proofs, then those that do so, they are connected to them and they will achieve, they'll be connected and will achieve what he calls إِلَى مَحَلَةِ السَّعَادَةِ وَالْكَمَالِ They will achieve true happiness and they will have a sense of completion. That means that when it comes to أَعْمَلْ صَالِحَا When it comes to doing righteous deeds إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا صَالِحَاتِ Right? That when we do them, if they truthfully are from the A'mal Salihat, then it should give us a sense of sa'ada. It should give us a sense of happiness. Even if they are from the fara'id. Even if they are from those that we have commanded to do, we have no choice. Wa'aqimu salah. You ain't got no choice but to pray. And so you might not feel like it in the morning when you get up, or you're tired, you want to go to bed early. And it's the summertime and the Isha doesn't come until late, right? But when you complete the salah as you've been commanded to do, work to understand or work to cultivate that sa'ada, that sense of I'm happy, even though I might be tired, even though it's not easy to get up, even though it's not easy to whatever of those things, even from the fara'id, even from those things that are wajib, I have sa'ada, I'm happy. And I also feel complete. I don't need to go trick or treating uh, because the deen of Islam is complete. Um, I, I just had to take my jab now that it's over. Um, and so, this is uh, some of what the Imam is helping us to understand about this. Uh, and he said, likewise, right, that we have to call people based upon, again, this was all. We have to call them what? Da'watan, make the call ta'leeman, educate them what? Wa irshadan, with rushd, with correct action. He says, kama qala ta'ala. Because this is like what Allah Ta'ala has said in his book. Uh, for instance, in Surah Al Imran, again at the 110th verse, where Allah says, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas. You have been made the best community brought out for humanity. That includes not only in ilm, in terms of understanding who is Allah. He is one, not two or three. That we understand that he is Rabbul Alameen. We understand that he is the Lord who cares for everything and sustains it. And we understand him bi asma'ihi al-husna wa sifatihi. We understand him by his beautiful names and his attributes that he has described himself with. In that way, when we call people based upon that, and we educate them based upon that, and we act based upon that, then we can be part of the ummah 
أُخْرِجَتْ للناس That the best community brought about for people. Who what تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُفِ You, not they, you. It's a direct addressing of all of us by Allah. تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُفِ Right? That what? We, I mean, you can say it's addressing the ummah because the ummah is uh, mu'annith, right? It's feminine, but also it could be understood as what? Addressing a direct address to the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? Ta'muruna bil ma'rufi. You command people to what is good. In general, bil ma'ruf. Wa tanhawna anil munkari. And you forbid people, right? You forbid them from doing evil. Wa tu'minuna billah. And you believe in Allah, right? That is from uh, from the 110th verse of the third chapter of the Quran. Uh, and Allah Taala also likewise says, "What? وَلَا تَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ." Right? He said, "Therefore, let there be a community amongst you." Now, some have said, "Well, this means amongst the Muslims there will be ulama." And others have understood amongst the umum of al-insan, amongst all the communities of human beings, let there be a community of Muslims who, what? That yada'una al khair, they call to, to good. What is khair? Iman billah wa bi nabiyyihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa bi kitabihi wa malaikati. On and on, you already write to, they call to belief in Allah as we just described what? And wa ya'muruna bil ma'ruf wa yanhawna 'anil munkar wa ulaika hum al muflihun they call to good they forbid evil and they will be the ones who will be muflih they will have iflah they will have serenity they will have happiness they will have success in the hereafter and so that takes us up to concluding uh those four opening contentions uh as to um what he talks about, we all need to know. So next week, we're going to get into the part, he says, الدليل ما هو على ذلك. Right? We'll go a little bit further into some of his descriptions upon that. Uh, and we'll, we'll keep, uh, uh, he has some state, some athar, some statements of the, the salaf, of the different uh, imma, of the different imams and, and people to help us and encourage us in our understanding of that. Any questions before we go? Any questions, comments before we go? Uh, for the brother online, may Allah Ta'ala help you in your struggle. Uh, but unfortunately, I, there's nothing that I can do for you sitting here uh, in a lesson. Um, and it's, uh, I, you know, e even for those who are in need, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi admonished those uh, for begging not in the right place and in the right conditions. That might sound a little stiff, but that is deen al-haq, that is the truth of Islam. Uh, so may Allah Ta'ala alleviate your condition, but uh, you know, barging in in the middle of a lesson is not the way uh, to achieve that. Any thoughts, questions before we go? So we ask Allah Ta'ala to Rabbana uh, Zidna Ilman. We ask Allah Ta'ala to increase us in knowledge. May Allah Ta'ala make us also from the people of righteous guidance, those who believe and then act upon that belief. May Allah Ta'ala unite all of us in the hereafter to be amongst those who are successful. على النبي الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته جزاك الله خير وياك